we're delighted to say that Dan has arrived from the BBC. Hello. And uh, Dan, would you introduce yourself and explain what's going on? Well, I'm the uh, executive producer from BBC Learning and I'm responsible for uh, putting together the, um, a lot of the editorial and the content for the Radio 1 Academy, which is here at the, at the Phoenix. Um, we're all very, very excited to be here um, to deliver what is a fantastic week of, of workshops, uh, question and answer sessions, and to the hands-on interactive um, learning, really, for, for young people um, in, in all across Devon. And so during, during the week, there's going to be performances here but also talks and workshops. That's right. So it's a great kind of mix of, of really good learning opportunities with actually some really fun gigs. Um, we've got some live lounges going on with some of the, the, the most, uh, the hottest, the most interesting um, performers in the country at the moment. And um, we've also got a... Um, a gig on. Oh, no. Yeah, don't, don't use this phone. It's phones are going off. On no, so. I've got my phone going off. Yeah, well, See, what, what's happening is I'm running, helping run the academy and coming to talk to you on radio. Right, no, I do understand. And uh, I've got all my comms, my radio's clicking. And I'm so technically inept, I can't work out to how to oh, turn it off. Worry. There we no, go, it's, it's off now. It's Sorry gone. about that's that. All right. that's, all right. that's quite all right. Um, see, live, you see, we're all, well, it's, exactly. it's happening, it's ongoing. Yeah, no, it's very good for you to nip down. <laughs> we're in the basement of the building. And um, so it's not far away from you, but I do right uh, understand. Now upstairs, I mean, upstairs, it's this, 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 this kind of hubbub of uh, of young people, excitement, uh, music. It's, it's just brilliant. It's absolutely, it's, it's brilliant to be here. So look, I, I know you can't stay long, so I'm just going to get to my question about uh, television first of all, because I know I know roughly what the answer is going to be, but just I'd just like to sort of get a, get some sort of rec recording of it. What strikes me is that when when the academy was in Hackney. There was a lot of performance on the on the actual big weekend that ended up on BBC Three television, so broadcast television. Whereas now, uh, BBC Three has gone from that. So, is it right? It's all going to appear on YouTube or the iPlayer or the website or not sort of non-television ways as we would imagine it. Yeah. So lots of the content that's recorded here um, will be on the Radio One uh, Academy website. Um, and that's where people can can dip into there to kind of see the resources that are on offer. So as well as the performances, there's lots of kind of learning. Um, there'll be kind of toolkits for young people trying to kind of make that break into um, the creative industries. Um, it's a really good place to, to go where we kind of curate everything that we've, we've got here. Um, and I think that it's perfect kind of a forum um, for the kind of people that we, we want to get to our, our material you know the, the you can dip in and out on your tablets on your mobiles on your laptop and watch three four minute pieces or 15 second pieces the way um, I think we engage with the BBC has changed massively over the years and, and, and I think young people want those quick hits um, and we can kind of give them those kind of resources quite easily on, on different platforms Right. So, do 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 you think? I mean, I'm going a, a bit off, maybe what what's happening at the moment, but it just interests me. Do you, do you think sort of live music on television is is going to fade away and it's going to move online? Do you know that's a question way above my my pay grade. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think, All right. We'll just sort of leave that one. There. I do think though that you know, I mean, live music is a, an amazing, amazing experience, isn't it? You just can't. Um, appreciate how powerful it is until you you're there and you're witnessing it and i mean i i think you know young people well anybody really should just go to more gigs and use places like the phoenix you know because they're amazing performance spaces where you can see amazing performers particularly i would say uh people from from devon i was um privileged enough to go to the bbc introducing um gig last week in in at the pavilions right and um some fabulous bands played there there's some more fabulous bands from the local area coming on uh, wednesday night here so this, there's real talent in this region it's kind of what we want to do is get people excited and engaged and you know be proud enough to come and perform and show off on um for on Saturday, yeah. Saturday um, towards the end of play on Saturday here, we've got um, a live showcase. So anybody can come and, and talk to us and l let us know they want to perform. We'd love to hear from more people from 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 Devon and from Exeter. 
Right, so so what's happening with tickets? Is I mean, is that sort of thing sold out already? Or are they- now you can go online uh, to the uh, BBC Radio One um, Academy website, right, and it will direct you to our ticketing uh, platform online, um, and you can see what's available. Um, uh, and I would also say, you know, if there are sessions you or gigs that you can't get into because you see they're they're booked just come anyway because there's always a chance that they may be oversubscribed right okay so there's a, we do a waiting list we do a reserve so so, so the, the other thing is like the, the age of people because uh do you have to be 19 or younger to go to no, you so no you have to be uh, let's say let's do the other way around you have to be 16 or over the oh, the okay. kind of the kind of sessions we're putting on are geared towards the, the 16 to 19 year old um age group because that's where we sort of see that, that that's the kind of the learning moments where they're at their formative parts of their careers. They're just thinking about what they want to be, who they want to be and how academically they can progress. In terms of the gigs, I would encourage anybody to look and see if they want to come because we don't want to exclude anybody. Right, OK. And there's one that I've, I've booked a ticket for, which is about digital storytelling. Yeah, so can you explain a little bit what, what that might mean? Uh, well, again, it goes back to the way that um, we as consumers of media are consuming our media and how we're getting our news and how we're getting our, our information. Um, and I think the the move is much more towards digital platforms. Um, you know, uh, the way... Um, as well as the way that our consumption changes, the way that we as broadcasters have to change. We have to reflect our audience's wants and desires and habits. Um, so telling um, news stories in a digital age is, is, is very different. You know, it's a, it's a different way that you have to, you, you might want to think about framing your headlines. You might think about how you're going to film things, make it very visual. Um, and then how you're going to get people to, to um, migrate to it, how you get people to, to click onto it, um, and there are some great um, some great kind of journalists like Evan Davis, um, Newsnight presenter, right. Tina Dehealy, who's Newsbeats presenter, who are moving into this this digital world and, and embracing it. So, if if they if they start doing that, then news is going to go the same way that music is going, presumably. I don't think so. I think it's just other ways. I don't think it's a threat to to um, traditional news outlets. I just think it's a it's a different audience, and um, I think if you can engage um, a new audience, perhaps a younger audience in in news and current affairs, then we're all going to be better off, aren't we? Really? Well, yes. No, I, I, I don't. I don't think. I mean, CDs are still existing. FM radio still exists. Yeah. So they, all these things can can coexist. But um, I just wonder. Um, I mean, if Newsnight is a whole load of separate clips that are all on YouTube and accumulate during the week, people make their own choice instead of watching it for sure on a Wednesday or something like that. But it becomes a bit different, doesn't it? It does, and, and I don't know. I think we're all still learning. I think the the, the digital age, digital media presents problems and opportunities you know i think we're all still trying to work out how we can use it to our to our best advantage there'll always be people who want to um get their news or their their music or their any media through kind of traditional channels and i think i don't think they'll disappear i just think there'll be other ways that other people can access it right so bbc learning presumably has a, some sort of connection with BBC Two, for example, or would that? Not really. BBC Learning, um, uh, based up in Salford, right? And um, the things that BBC Learning, perhaps uh, most people will know, will come into contact with them is actually through Bite Size. Um, so BBC Bite Size is uh, made by the, the team at BBC Learning, right? Um, and we work. Um, to do campaigns um, like this one, the Radio One Academy, which is an event, um, but also we are really involved with um, the BBC Shakespeare Festival that's been going on for the last 
the, the, the last few months. So we worked with um, our friends at CBBC and CBeebies to do Shakespeare programmes for young people, right. very young people, right. and engage them in, in Shakespeare. Um, and we also had a um, an online interactive um, where you selected um, emojis bear with me right. this is going somewhere yeah. okay where you selected emojis based on how you were feeling and those emojis uh were sent to a computer program and their algorithms and they turned it into um, a shakespearean quote right so um if you're feeling a bit confused <laughs> yes. i'm racking my brains now thinking yeah. right which shakespeare? so yeah. if you were feeling confused um the quote and you put in the confusion emoji the the quote might be um though there be though this be madness there be method in um and you would share that with your friends you know and and you you know you put it on twitter you put it on instagram you put it on facebook and you can and in theory and it did work actually people right. would reply with other shakespearean quotes to make you feel better or to yeah. tell you how they were yeah. feeling right that's just a way of trying to engage that kind of 16 to 34 year old audience who might have had um 16 to 34 this is sabi Remind me that the CBB. Okay, so this, so CBBs is CBBs is up is uh, up to six. Right. CBBC is six to kind of mm, twelve, maybe a little bit older, and then. But you get the you get the the chart on it, don't you? Do you if I, I've been told that the Radio One chart. Yeah, the chart can shows, turn up there. The chart well. shows on CBBC on a, on a Friday. Yeah. So what what age of people are, are watching that? Do you think that's well? CBC is sort of six to uh i want to say 12 i might have to go and check with that but yeah it's but there's no there's not a lot of chart shows on on mainstream television is there so maybe maybe there's quite a range of people watching it well you know maybe that's the thing if if that younger if that really young crowd can kind of engage in in the chart shows and on tv then maybe they'll as they grow there might be programs for them you know coming back on on the tv yeah, well, look, you're still here. We've we've had five minutes, so I'm just going to try to get random <laughs> questions. This idea that it's all targeted in age groups, which the BBC seems to like, mm. that that because you've got to sort of get rid of DJs every so often, don't you, from Radio One because they're they're far too old. So you've got to have young, much younger ones. Do you think the music actually sort of plays to that? In in the, I mean, is the because I'm I'm obviously from the last century in most of the music that I play. Um, but I just wonder if you can sort of guarantee that okay you're going to target an audience that's all under 25 or all under 17 or whatever you decide mm. whether the music sort of fits into that or whether if you played it to people who are 40 or 50 or some other age mm. whether they would quite like it as well do you know that's the beauty about music isn't it it's it's so subjective you, you some people will kind of know what they like and only listen to what they like other people will go oh actually i'm quite interested in who's influenced this person or who's influenced that person and i'll try something else i you know i, I music's a beautiful thing isn't it because it, 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 there's so much out there and there's so much and there's something for everybody isn't there well yeah and yeah and i think I would say I, I, I kind of get, get what you're getting at. I will put it the other way. I wonder if someone who likes a Luna George, who's just played just now, might do a bit more exploring and think, well, what her, her what are her influences? You know, has she has she kind of drawn influence from older musicians, bands from you know much longer ago? Right. Uh, you know, right. maybe there's there's exploration there to be done. Right, and some of that will come out in the in the talks during during the I think week. So yeah, well, well, Alina's going to do um, a, a songwriting workshop shortly, so I'd be interested to know where she gets her inspiration from, and then in turn she can inspire <laughs> some young people to write some music of their own. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I think I think that's great. I think we've I think we've covered covered most of it. But you're here for the week. Yeah, as long as, as long as nothing's happened in the last five minutes, we're here no. for the rest of the week. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll get to turn my radio back on now and sure. uh, go back to work. Sure. Look, I'll just, I'll just mention there's another show that I'm involved in on a, on a Thursday between 10 and 12. So, I, I, and I think probably it goes for most of the shows on Phonic FM during the week. If, if any of you involved in the Academy have got time to nip down, yeah. And um, explain what's going on. No, we'd love to help. I, I, I think and most people would, would welcome. Yeah, it. I know, and and I think we'd love to see more people come down as well. So you know, check on the uh, Radio One website for for tickets and and get down and come to the gigs and come to the workshops. Um, you know, we might discover 
the next uh, Chris Martin. He's from he's from around these parts, he is isn't around, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah he is you know. So maybe yeah. maybe somewhere out there, there's there's some really talented young people who are hiding their lights under bushels, and actually we could find them here, and uh, never know in, in four or five years' time. So be, you'll be playing them on the radio. Oh, we, we, we'll be playing them before that. <laughs> I hope so too. Right? No, yeah. we're, we're the, I th- you know, because I mean, more more realistically, <laughs> it's it's sort of weekends when there's lots of different acts going on in the Phoenix, and yeah. everybody gets a chance to be heard. Yeah. So, just so again, Saturday, there's, a, there's the showcase. Showcase on Saturday, that's kind of our, our sort of closing showcase. Um, but don't wait till Saturday to come. No, 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 no. <laughs> I just thought that was the one to mention from yeah. that point of view, yeah. that people can probably probably turn up, yeah. turn up there. Yeah, yeah, we'd like to see people down here and um, enjoying what we've, what we've put on for everybody. Right. OK, well, thanks very much for coming, coming down. Pleasure, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. I've got to find, find a track now. I'll, I'll, I'll say Play some Maluna George. Well, we might do. We might do. I'll try and find some Maluna George <laughs> later on. Yes. Okay. I think this is Ronnie Spector. <laughs> <laughs>